What is going on everybody? It's your boy Anthony, Long Island Fish Guy here. And on today's video, I have some pretty bad news. If you guys came across my channel because you saw a video on Calamanus parasites, Calamanus worms, I have some really, really, really bad news and it's the fact that they're actually back. Um, if you guys do not know what Calamanus worms are, is that they're probably, to my knowledge at least, one of the worst parasites that you can actually get inside of your aquarium. A lot of times people get them in guppies and platies and really typically smaller type fish. Specifically for me, both times I discovered them in a Bolivian ram. Uh, these typically are shown a lot quicker and easier inside of smaller fish. So a Bolivian ram, like the ones that are in this aquarium, and excuse the kind of cloudiness and murkiness of this aquarium but i think and don't get me wrong you might see other videos on youtube or have your own issue with calamanus worms but my experience every time i get calamanus worms the tanks get super cloudy like this let's take a look at what i'm talking about if you guys do like this video be sure to like the video and if you're not subscribed to my channel already be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other content like this this is the bolivian ram that i actually came across that had the calamanus worms. If you could see right there, it's got like little red uh, worms. You know, you can see kind of spikes coming out of its butt. And another reason why this is going to really hit home for not only me, but a lot of my subscribers is the fact that this red wolf fish is in this aquarium too. This is my 40 gallon breeder. Um, I'm going to kind of get into a little bit about this in a little bit, but uh, this 40 gallon breeder also was affected with the calamanus worms. Specifically, I saw it in my uh, Balzani uh, geophagus, not this one, which is right over here, this one that's over here. Uh, but this one also, I'll try to get a better angle a little bit later on. Uh, but this guy actually has a kind of like a bulging uh, vent in the back. But I know a lot of you guys love this red wolf fish, and because potentially he is affected by this parasite i need to take extra good care of him i love you know i love all my fish don't get me wrong but this red wolf fish is is one of my favorite fish not only that i have right now but um that i've ever kept so we definitely need to <sighs> We definitely need to make sure he's going to be okay. Now, I said that, you know, if you came across my video before, I already had calamanus worms. I had, like, a video on basically explaining how to treat calamanus worms. These are very hard to get rid of worms and parasites that you can get inside your fish. Things like metrodizol and, and proziquilin uh, cannot actually get rid of these parasites. Um, salt really won't affect them. You need serious, serious medication to get rid of them. Me, personally, I like to use Febendazidol as well as Levemensol. Uh, I don't use Levemensol. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make another video on how to basically do this. The first video I made was kind of when I was a little bit more inexperienced. I didn't know as much about not only the aquarium hobby, but as well as this specific parasite as much as I know right now. I know I can make that video a lot better um, and help out a lot more people. Um, if I come out with that video and give a lot deeper explanations as to one, how to eradicate it, and two, what is it? And I treated the tank with febenzodiazole, and we're going to be doing that right now. Uh, I purchased the febenzodiazole, and I'll be treating the tank, the actual water column itself, as well as medicated foods. Let's get back into some of the things that I've been seeing about the fish. So this is a 29 gallon community tank. There's a lot of small fish in here, and I kind of did a little bit of inspecting here and kind of wondering. These German blue rams are somewhat new. Um, I purchased them actually from a friend of mine, and I'm not sure. They could have had, he, he could have had these fish with the parasites in them. A lot of them are behaving pretty normally. There's four in here, I purchased five, but where's the fifth one? The fifth one is at the top. Now, if you are experiencing uh, calamanus, you'll kind of know that the fish behave this way. A lot of times what they'll do is kind of hang out at the top. Its face is actually getting a little bit uh, like white on it. It looks like it's actually like missing a few scales on its face. But it's odd because in my experience, typically they get like this when you can actually see visible worms. In this one specifically, you can't see it. These fish actually also kind of had a little bit of like clear poop, which is also a pretty telltale sign of, of a parasite. 
not only Calamanus worms, but also like a parasite. But all of the other fish in this tank, I've done a pretty hefty inspection. None of them really show any signs of having parasites. Uh, this Balzini over here, maybe, but nothing else. Like the beardless barb in the corner, that, um, that platinum bicher looks pretty fine. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, I'm actually moving a lot of these tanks around and such. Uh, those two tanks, the 29 and the 15 gallon quarantine tank underneath it, they used to be over here. And my 40 gallon breeder and my 20 gallon long, they used to be over there. Uh, but we are setting up and getting ready uh, to get the 220 gallon aquarium. We're gonna put it right here in the corner. But I'm not even excited about that anymore because of this happening. Now what I've been kind of doing as a preventative just to ensure that none of my other tanks have any sort of issues. We got the Kelberry Peacock Bass, some freshwater stingrays in my 125. We have the Lotistic or Albino or Golden Arowana down there. We want to make sure they're protected as well as George the Oscar fish. Um, I even have some awesome fish over there in my quarantine setup. So we want to make sure that all of these fish are safe and that there's no cross contamination or there's no further contamination of any of these other aquariums. If you guys did watch the last videos or kind of bought along my channel a long time, that 29 gallon aquarium that did have the Calamanus worms, all of those fish died. Um, I got to it late. The number one thing you need to do at these Calamanus worms is catch it early. I did catch this pretty early. When I found it the first time around, like five to ten of the fish had Calamanus worms. A lot of them had the actual spikes coming out of them. I've now found only one in each tank that actually had that redness coming out. So hopefully I caught it somewhat early um, and can start treatment right away. But another thing I've been doing is uh, I've actually been bleaching a lot of my equipment. It's all kind of scattered around the, the ground here. I use this tote to move four different aquariums. That's why I'm also really nervous, guys, about the cross-contamination. So I've used everything bleach. Um, if you guys ever do bleach anything, I use uh, nine parts of water to one part of bleach. So uh, basically what I did was I, I took this container of bleach here and I uh, poured it into that green tote and I filled this up nine times and basically put everything in it and as well as you know kind of doing my buckets here and fill you know I filled them up with bleach with the same type of solution. So everything's pretty much sterilized now and we need to just make sure I'm kind of gonna treat these two aquariums the 29 gallon and the 40 gallon breeder and just sit and wait. Uh, I'm gonna sit and wait. Uh, I'll kind of go through the treatment. I'm gonna come up and again guys I'm gonna follow up with a video about this on a how to treat Calamanus worms part two you know, round two, whatever you want to call it, um, and kind of show you the experience. I think that, you know, if you do catch it early, you'll have a lot more success, guys. So fingers crossed for me. Hopefully we do actually see some success in my treatments, but I am going to let you guys like, kind of follow along with me in this journey of treating this time around for the Calamanus worms. It's going to be a lot more uh, <laughs> interactive, if you would say. Um, so if you guys do like this video, give me, a, give me that thumbs up. Give me some words of encouragement, guys, because I'm not kidding. Probably one of the most depressing things that I've ever experienced in this hobby was dealing with these Calamanus worms. Uh, it was horrible. It really was. The, the, the Calamanus worms and losing Steve the Stingray, those were definitely the two biggest uh, depressing, if you would say, things that I've ever experienced in this hobby. So whew, give me some words of encouragement, guys. I, I'm going to do my best. I don't want to lose any. I don't want to lose a single one of these fish. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video. So if you guys did like this video, be sure to subscribe. Check out some of the other content here on my channel. Ding that notification bell if you already subscribed. Most importantly, don't forget to fish on.